Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 1st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Rob had more PowerShell goodness for all of you and the latest diary that he published this weekend explains how to collect hashes from running processes across an entire domain and then verify them via VirusTotal. Now, before you go ahead and quickly implement this, uh, he also points out that if you just have the free public API key for VirusTotal, you're limited to four requests a minute or 5,760 requests per day. In general, this shouldn't really actually be all that bad given that even across a large network, probably many hosts are running the same configuration, the same software. So you should get an awful lot of duplicate uh, hashes as you are acquiring them. And really what you're probably interested in are sort of the one-offs, uh, the new processes. So you should be able to narrow it down to a few interesting hashes hashes that you are then checking on virus total. And Mozilla released the latest, greatest version, version 5 of its TLS server configuration guide. One of the interesting features about this guide is that it's also available in JSON format and can easily be used then to automate the configuration of TLS services. Of course, this really focuses on web servers. Now, before you go out and quickly implement it, be aware that it comes in various levels most notably an intermediate and modern configuration. Be a little bit careful with the modern configuration. It really assumes that you are using essentially the latest and greatest browser versions. For example, it does recommend TLS 1.3 as the only TLS version. The intermediate version does also offer TLS 1.2. And well, uh, you know, 1.2 and 1.3 together, you have pretty good browser coverage at this point. Like any configuration hardening guide, you should never implement them blindly, but first double check that it doesn't break anything in your particular environment. Now, if you have used the PGP or GNU PGP or any of the variants before, you are probably familiar with key servers. Key servers can be used to distribute public keys. Now, in order to make sure that the public key is authentic, you can attach signatures that users trust to specific public keys before you upload them. Once a key is uploaded to a key server, anybody can download it. Anybody can also attach additional signatures to the key and then re-upload the key. There's a network of these key servers that go under the acronym of SKS or Synchronizing Key Servers. Lately, however, these key servers have come under attack. Some very well known individuals' keys have been essentially polluted with lots and lots of signatures. In one particular case, Robert J. Hansen's key, uh, he's also the maintainer of the GNU PG FAQ, has uh, been equipped now with over 150,000 signatures. While this is not really a problem for the SKS network itself, it is a problem if someone is downloading the key. Current implementations of GPG that that are commonly used by users to process these keys will essentially freeze if they see this key. And when it's added to the local keychain, well, uh, all functions uh, of GPG essentially are no longer available. It's not exactly sure who is the source of these denial of service attacks, but apparently multiple keys are affected by them. And Robert Hansen did publish an FAQ with some details also how you can fix your system if you're affected by this particular attack. And QR codes are back in the news as it relates to phishing. CoFans published an article about a phishing campaign that they have observed recently that took advantage of 
QR codes. The trick of course here is that the user receives an email with a QR code, maybe on their work system, but then uses their personal smartphone in order to scan the QR code and access the malicious phishing website. At that point, of course, if the user is using the personal smartphone, they're evading most corporate phishing controls. And as a result, the phishing attack hopes to become more successful. The idea overall is new, uh, has been written about quite a bit over the last few years, but the implementations have not really been all that common, probably because it's easy enough to get users to just click on a link and protections against these kind of phishing attacks aren't necessarily all that terribly strong. And it may actually be a little bit more difficult to convince a user to pull out their smartphone, read the QR code, then go to the mobile website, then compare it to just getting them to click on the link. But probably if you're looking for something to tell your users in your monthly security awareness uh, email or such, this may be a nice trick to add. Well, and the zip for today. Thanks again for listening. Now, given the time zones I'll be in in the next couple of weeks, the time at which I release this podcast may change a little bit. So for this week in particular, I probably will release it more so in the afternoon, not so much in the evening or late at night Eastern time as I usually do. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.